is my modified laser tag blaster. This is based off of this guy, essentially, if you couldn't already tell. Uh, this is a laser tag augmented reality blaster, or LTAR, or LTAR, or whatever you'd like to call it. Um, but it's mostly just a bunch of add-on parts to the base tagger. There are no internal changes made to this one yet. I'm essentially testing out different uh, 3D printed products to enhance the blaster, as well as different uh, lens types to extend the range. With laser tag, you're dealing with focused light instead of uh, projectiles, obviously. This small infrared LED is emitting light through this magnified lens, and uh, that ex this lens extends its range, essentially. Most laser tag blasters have a range of about, oh, anywhere from 200 to 400 feet. 400 is kind of what most of ours seem to have, most of the, the basic blasters before we modify them. Um, I know it's a lot further than a lot of Nerf guys on my channel are used to, but uh, that's part of the reason why I like both is uh, you get quite a bit of range and precision accuracy out of laser tag. Um, anyway, you'll notice that this lens is different, but also this whole piece here is different. This is a 3D printed part um, that is uh, flat on the end here, so that way I can mount the end of this uh, lens housing there. Just a piece of pipe with a glass lens that's magnifying that light. The bottom one here is actually giving me hit confirmation and lock-on signatures. Um, unfortunately, it is not as magnified as this guy, so I actually exceed the range of the lock-on signatures long before, um, long before I'm out of range with the actual blaster itself. Now, these tests that I'm running today are testing out um, not really the range on this because I'm not going to be able to see all the range out of this guy today because it's daytime, range gets cut down a little bit during the day. Um, not a whole lot with this system, but then also it's incredibly hard for me to be able to see the range that I'm going to be testing today. So I'm really just making sure that I have my aim point micro red dot and green dot sight dialed in properly today. Then I'm going to test it at night because it'll be easier to actually see the hit confirmations because these domes light up in red when they're hit. It's much easier to see at night. So I'm going to turn on my blaster that's going to be getting hit here today, put him on 25 hits and set him there. Now I have this point set in Google Maps as well, so that way I can measure out when I'm done. Um, I've kind of already measured where I'm going to be going today. Thank you. Um, let's see. I've measured out, the distance I'm going to be covering is about 300 feet, which is already pretty good. Good luck. Thank you. So what we're testing first is um, just to make sure that the lock-on signatures are working properly because at a short range like this to set up your uh, your green dot or red dot sight um, it's kind of important to have this right because if this isn't working properly then when you move further out you're not going to be able to hit anything. I'm already getting heat, uh, not heat signatures, well, um, lock-on signatures and I don't even have the green dot sight on. Move a little to the left, to the right, up, down, hitting him just fine. I'm going to hit him four more times. Hit confirmations are working fine. We're going to move our way up the street. This stock is really nice too. This is a Raider style stock and uh, this 3D printed bit here that my buddy Nick made for me has a weaver rail attachment on top for the sight but then it also has this uh, end strike adapter on the back. It actually makes use of both the iPod cradle that used to go on top, as well as the, uh, the battery door down here to give it a little bit more rigidity. It's a really nice design, goes in nice and solid, I haven't had any issues with it, and it's sturdy enough to where it can kind of not pop off the blaster when I've got it shouldered properly. Let's do a couple more shots here. Still getting lock-on signature. Still getting hit confirmation, that's fine. We're gonna move up the street. So I can already tell that the, uh, the green dot sight is dialed in properly. Now it's just a matter of whether I've uh, improved the range significantly enough to make the loss in spread worth it. Regular blasters usually have a little bit of spread, a little bit of uh, leeway in terms of you know how far, uh, how far off the target you can be in order to still land a hit. Um, the end of this fence over here in my neighbor's yard I've measured out is about 300 feet. So uh, we'll be able to see, well maybe not be able to see. I can still see the target, but, oh. 
I'm still getting hit confirmation, good. So I can move even further up the street. So far the test is going well as you can see. Um, really happy with this lens combination. Um, it's short enough so that way it's not really in the way. Some other lenses that I've tried out are about double this length for the focal length and uh, kind of a pain to make quick maneuvers through the trees and brush. So we're up here now. Let's see. No lock-on signature. At least that I can get. Let's reload and... Now, if, uh, if I were getting lock-on signature, hopefully I'd be getting hit confirmations from this range too. I should technically be uh, hitting him quite easily from here. That street sign's kind of in the way. Uh, he should be dead by now. I've gone through several rounds on here. Maybe I should have been paying closer attention to how many exactly. But regardless, we're going to head back down and see if that little red dome on him is lit up in red. If he is, then uh, I know A, that I've got this set up all ready to go, and B, pretty confident uh, with my abilities to be able to hit beyond the hit confirmation here just by knowing I've got the green dot on him and uh, that at these ranges I can just assume that my hits are making it to the target. Now hit confirmation unfortunately is only on blasters that have that type of technology in them. The LTAR blasters in 2012 had them. The LTXs, which are more common for our group, were, that were made in 2008 do not have hit confirmation. Um, but the older LTTO blasters made in 2004 do. So there's kind of a weird gap between them. But, uh, oh good, um, I actually, I saw that the red light was on further back there. Yep, he's dead. He is D-E-D -E -D dead. So that's good. Now I just need to do some, uh, some tests at night to actually get an idea of how long this range is. Luckily, just out this back fence here, I've got a uh, rather large park. Um, and from the tests that I've been doing on this lens and other lenses that are similar to it, I really shouldn't, uh, shouldn't have any problem hitting anything in this park, especially in this long straightaway where there's no obstructions. Um, and that's kind of where these longer range blasters thrive. The regular blasters are just fine for doing general combat, but if players get caught out in this open space, uh, it's kind of game over if there's anyone totting one of these things out there. Um, there's a couple of us that have essentially long range blasters in the group. Um, so that's, uh, that's kind of been, kind of been fun to mess around with that. But the trade off then is, uh, well, A, maneuverability sometimes, if this guy's a little bit longer. But B, um, you're, uh, you have to be a lot, a lot more accurate with your shooting when it comes to these guys because there's not nearly as much leeway in terms of the spread of the light that's being uh, focused onto it. Because the longer range you get, the tighter that beam gets, the more accurate you need to be. So uh, looking forward to trying this guy out at night time to get a better idea of ranges but 300 to 400 feet in here should be plenty um, it's just a just a matter of making sure that the user behind this blaster doesn't suck it up so uh, yeah we'll run some more tests this weekend at the games and uh, hopefully have some good results